If you have ever tried to keyframe anything in Final Cut Pro, you will know that it sucks. A lot. Luckily, there is a way to fix the terrible keyframing in Final Cut Pro with a plugin called Add Motion. With Add Motion, you can create movements in your footage or add animations like this. In this Final Cut Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how Add Motion works and how powerful it is. Before we dive into how the plugin works, let me quickly show you a real world example of why Add Motion is so much better than Final Cut Pro's built in keyframing. We have this time lapse clip of Tower Bridge in London. I'm going to go over here and set a keyframe on the scale and the position of the clip. And I'll go forward a second or so and I'll change the scale here to 125. And I'll reposition this so that the tower, or the bridge, sorry, is in the corner like that. If I play that back, you'll notice that the movement isn't very smooth. And because we have some smooth keyframes and some linear keyframes, you'll end up with a black bar on the side of the frame. So have a look out for that. There it is. I'll select this clip and hit Control V to show my keyframes. And if I go over to position, I can right click on these keyframes and change the keyframes from smooth to linear. I'll do that for both of them. Now when I play that back, I don't have that problem of the black edge, but movement also doesn't have any easing to it. Now let's compare that with add motion on an adjustment layer where we can set the takeoff and landing to ease. It's much, much smoother. Just being able to do this makes add motion a worthwhile plugin to have. Hit that like button if you agree. Once you've installed AdMotion, there are a few different elements that you will find in Final Cut Pro. In your Titles browser under AdMotion, you'll find an AdMotion text title effect, an adjustment layer, and two 3D title effects. In your Effects browser under AdMotion, you have a few effects like AdMotion, Pop, Swing, Color Trails, and two different motion blur options. These title effects and effects are really powerful and they are capable of doing so much more than what I can cover in just one video. But let's start by running through how the plugin works and then I'll show you a few examples of how I personally use it. So you can apply this add motion effect directly onto a clip, but I like to use an adjustment layer when I'm working with footage because that gives me a little bit more freedom and control. So let's drop this adjustment layer on top of the clip and I'll retime it to fit using the shortcut Alt and the square bracket. And that will trim the adjustment layer to my playhead. Then I'll add the add motion effect to this adjustment layer. And then I can come over here to change my parameters. If I double click at the top of this inspector window, I can expand the view of all these parameters. Basically how the add motion plugin works is you set an A position and a B position, and then you move from A to B or B to A. You've got a couple of options here, which I'll run through in a second. When you set the position, you can change the actual position, the rotation, the scale, and the depth of the A and the B positions, and you've got a couple of other parameters as well. Let's set the A position to zero because we want that to be how the shot looks at the moment, and the B position will zoom in to 150%. I'll scrub a bit forward here so we can see where that goes, and then I'm going to uncheck the snap to grid, and I'm going to change my B position so that we kind of have the top of the bridge in the frame like that. I'm going to double click on my inspector again, just so that I can get this view back to normal. And if I play that back, this is what it looks like at the moment. It moves like that at the moment because we have it set from A to B. So it moves from A, which have these parameters, to B, which is scaled up slightly, and we have the position slightly to the side. Also, it takes off from A in a linear way, so there's no easing. I can set that to ease, and I can set the landing to ease as well. We have a couple of options there, which I'll go through again in a sec. And if I play that back, this is what it looks like. So now the motion is a little bit smoother, but I can also move from B to A, which means we'll go from that zoomed in view and zoom out. You have a few other options here. You can go from A to B and back to A. That's what A bump B does. I can also change the duration here. Let's say I set that to three. When I play that back, this is what it looks like. We're going to come back to using the add motion effect on footage in just a bit, because I want to show you how to create crash zooms, multiple movements on the same clip, and other dynamic movements. But there are a few things that I want to show you using graphics or logos. 
I have the add motion effect applied to this add motion logo over here and at the current settings it'll take off in a linear way and land with easing. I've also set the duration to one second and this is what that looks like. A nice simple slow movement but let's run through some of these settings so you can see what else is possible with add motion. I can set the landing to ease squared which is another form of easing or exponential which is a really slow easing in. I'll select that and I'm going to change the duration to 1.5 for this example and let me play that back. So you can see it comes in a little bit slower and docks on screen in a slower way. Another option is back and I'll play that back for you. What that does is it sort of overshoots the final position or the B position and then bounces back into place. Let's have a look at a couple of others. We've got double back, which is a bit of a bounce. We have snagged, which overshoots the B position and then kind of gets pulled back into place. We've got another option here, we've got elastic. We also have bounce. And we've got thud. And we've got back thud. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different options here to really customize these keyframes. Let's choose snagged for a second, and I'm going to set the rotation here on the A position to 360 degrees. Then when it animates in, this is what it looks like. If you rotate this logo in 3D space so that you essentially see the back of it, you've got some options here to choose how that looks. I'm not going to go through the rest of the options in detail, that's far too much for this video, but I'm sure that gives you an idea of what is possible with add motion. The pop effect is great if you need a logo to pop up on screen like the Effects Factory logo right here. This is a good time to tell you that Effects Factory is the sponsor of today's video and Effects Factory is basically an app store for plugins and they have a ton of great Final Cut Pro plugins including AdMotion. I'll leave a link down below for you to check them out if you're interested. Now you can simply add the pop effect to any clip like this logo and instantly you have a nice smooth pop-up animation. You can obviously go into the inspector window and change any of these parameters to customize this effect. The swing effect is cool too because you can have graphics swing into place like this Final Cut Pro logo in the top corner. Let me show you how easy it is to create that. I already have the Final Cut Pro logo in a compound clip and I'll add the swing effect. There are a few options that you can choose from in terms of what the logo can swing on and here you can get help on what each of them do, but I'm going to keep this set to bar. I'll change the duration to 1.5, I'll scale it down, and I'll adjust the position of the asset so that it's at the top of the screen. I'll grab the anchor and move that so that the logo is in the corner. I'll go to the beginning of the clip and change the pullback value until the logo is off the screen. If I go slowly through these first few frames here, you can see that it seems to swing a little bit to the side. That's because this 3D perspective option is checked, so I'll turn that off, and when I play it back, this is what you get. The color trails and motion blur effects are nice little extras that you can use to enhance your animations. Let's take the effects factory example that we added the pop effect to, and I'll add the color trails effect. I'll go through the first few frames, and you can see how we have these cool little color trails that follow the motion. You can change the trail length, the number of echoes and the colors if you like, and this is what it looks like. To show you how the Motion Blur plugin works, let's take the Final Cut Pro logo example with the swing effect applied to it and add the Motion Blur high effect. Motion Blur Tight does the same thing, but it's a little bit more subtle. You can see how the motion is blurred now, and this is what it looks like in real time. There are also a few text effects that are fun to use. You can drag and drop this add motion text effect onto the timeline and adjust the parameters to create your movement. There are so many ways to animate text using add motion, so you can be creative and come up with your own unique title animations. There are also pop and swing effects for 3D text, which might be handy to you if you work with 3D text often. A crash zoom is a sudden and fast zoom in, and creating smooth crash zooms is super easy with add motion. I have this shot of Cape Town and I want to crash zoom into this building over here. So I'll grab an adjustment layer which I'll start somewhere around there 
and I want to trim this adjustment layer using Alt and the square bracket over there. Next, I'll add the Add Motion plugin to this adjustment layer, and then we can come in and change our parameters. I'll set the A position to zero, and then on the B position, I want to set my scale to 150%. I'll go ahead and turn the Snap to Grid off so that I can adjust the B position freely, and I want to position it so that the building is in the middle of the frame. Next, I'll go ahead and set the duration to 0.3 of a second because I want to zoom in really quickly. I'll also set the take off to expo so that we quickly accelerate from zero into the zoom. And I'm going to set the landing to ease so that we don't have a sudden stop and we have a nice ease into the B position. I'll go ahead and play that back and this is what it looks like. And that looks pretty good, but one thing I'd like to do is add some motion blur to that zoom. So I'll go to the beginning here where it just starts to zoom in and I'm going to add my motion blur high effect onto that adjustment layer. Now you'll see we've got some really nice looking motion blur happening in the frame. All you need is a quick little whoosh sound effect to really bring this crash zoom to life. You can also create multiple movements on the same clip using multiple adjustment layers. Let's build on the crash zoom example. We already have this crash zoom that happens here, so we can copy that adjustment layer using Alt and dragging that adjustment layer like that. I'm going to change the length of this just a little bit, make it a little longer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the move from B to A. So now our B position, which is the beginning of this adjustment layer, is the same as the end position on this adjustment layer. Then we can go ahead and we can change the A position. Let's say we want to keep the scale at 150 because we're already zoomed in, but we want to position the clip so that we have lion's head and table mountain in view here. Let's duplicate this adjustment layer one last time, and I'm going to retime it to fit the length of this clip. And now I'm going to set this to move from A to B, and I'm going to set the B position back to zero and the scale back to zero. I want this movement to take place over about five seconds, and I'm going to set the takeoff to ease. This is what the entire shot looks like with the multiple movements. You can also create some really nice slow ease in and ease out movements by cranking up the duration. I have this six second long clip here of Lake Bled and I've set the duration of add motion on this adjustment layer to six and the takeoff and the landing are both set to ease. A position is at 150% so we're zoomed in onto the little island and the B position is fully zoomed out and revealing the entire clip. This is what that looks like. You can even slow down the movement at the beginning and the end by setting the takeoff and the landing to expo. And this is what that looks like. So Add Motion is only $49 and it's an incredible plugin for Final Cut Pro. I'll leave a link to Add Motion in the description down below. And if you're interested in getting a 10% discount on Add Motion, don't forget to use the coupon code Brad and Donna. I hope this review has given you a good idea of what AdMotion is capable of and how you can essentially fix Final Cut Pro's terrible keyframing problem. That's all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next one.